Cage Mines, Micah Frankel, Sandoval Fight Systems, and we have Freddie Sandoval. Told me he was going to take some time off. <laughs> 2024 was going to be a, a slow year for the team. They were going to, you know, not take any fights for the first half of the year. And everybody's working on technique. It only took like two days for that to go out the window, my friend. Pretty much. Pretty much. Um, it was more so uh, I was taking the year off to get some surgeries that I needed, uh, which I've started. Um, and then, like, uh, the opportunity came up, which obviously we're here for and we'll get into. Um, but right now, the guys, the amateur team is uh, actively training, learning technique. You know, we're not just jumping into fights. Uh, we are scheduling a couple guys for March and April for both Fight Worlds here and the one in Colorado. So uh, we're looking forward to that. You know, we had a great end of the year for SFS. Super, super great end of the year. And uh, we're going to open up this year even better than we finished last year. But myself... Um, how can I pass up a chance to fight at home again, dude? It's been a long, long time. Is that where this comes from? Bare knuckle. Yep. BKFC Prospect Series, January 27th, Revel Event Center. And I didn't even know that bare knuckle was on your radar. It wasn't. <laughs> Everybody, when it came out, said, would you do that shit? I said, for about 8,000, 10,000, I would do it. You know, I'm already too old. I've already cut my teeth in the fucking combat world sport, you know, uh, fighting on the streets growing up. And, um, you know, this one I've got to get paid for. Um, I've never really fought for money, but this is different. You know, I'm older now. I've got kids. I've got a family. I've got a business. And, uh, again, it's dangerous. You know, you're, gonna, you're risking breaking your hands, getting cut, you know. And, um, but it's at home, you know. And, uh, yeah, here we are. Did the opportunity get presented to you, the fight? How did this all come together? So I was actually talking to uh, the main event, Donald Sanchez. Me and him go way back. Uh, you know, we started wrestling in high school together. We had our first MMA fights together down in Socorro back in uh, December 2005. And, um, you know, obviously I'm going out to watch him and support the local guy. And, uh, you know, we we're just chatting. And I just asked him, you know, just asked him a couple questions about it because him too. He doesn't need the money. He's already established his name. He's done a lot. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? You know? And, uh, you know, it's just that it's that blood that runs through us, man, to fight and to compete. This is a whole different game. Um, granted, I'm the shorter guy in this fight. I'm not the smaller guy anymore, you know, fighting these six plus guys that are coming down from 220, 230. Uh, I don't have to grapple them. I don't have to wrestle them. I don't have to do all that. And uh, so we were just talking about it. And then he said, you know what? They're coming here, uh, coming here soon end of January. I was like, let me know, let's talk. And uh, the offer came and had a couple of negotiations back and forth and um, signed the contract uh, about a week and a half ago. You made the return, took a decade away from competition. You made the return. So there's some similarities already between you and your opponent. Bill's mm -hmm. been out of the circuit for seven years since the last time he competed and had a fight. Do you, is there some already respect and something between you two, that kind of similarity that you guys have that kind of similar path? Old school, took some time off to focus on your business and your families and you're both, you know, it's the personal, goals right now that you're both after yeah um i i uh i the respect comes from him being an older guy um and him wanting to do this um i talked to his coach who i respect very well and um you know uh, his kids were brought up and the fact that he's got three boys and you know that's why he's doing this and that's why i got back into this right to show my kids that anything's possible um but this one for me is personal this is not for my kids this is not for nobody else this is not for my fighters for my family this is for me this fight is for me and um you know i respect him getting in there and taking the uh taking the opportunity to to do this right um it's not necessarily a young man's game either you know it's not mma and um so yeah that's where i'm at with this and with him and yeah i see some similarities um you know uh, he's high into the jiu-jitsu community he always has been um i don't know if he's been competing actively lately i know that's where i started out when i got back into uh this world a couple years ago but uh yeah you know anybody that has the balls to step in there and do this crazy shit, they've got my respect whether i like them or not 
you're a wrestler. He has mm -hmm. 17 MMA wins by submission. So this makes perfect sense. Bare, bare knuckle fighting. Uh, do you feel like either one of you then from your backgrounds, from where your strengths are, has an advantage in this stand-up fight? Well, I definitely feel that I do. You know, I come from the streets of Albuquerque, right? I grew up fighting here on the streets. Um, my back history has not always been making good choices in life, right? So that's put me in places where I've had to fight, right? And uh, it's no refs, no gloves, you know? So I think I've got a little more experience up that alley. Um, I know he does security and stuff like that, but you're not actively doing that type of stuff uh, like what I was doing, you know, uh, when I was away on my vacations. So you feel like a lot of the guys have said that this is returning to something that's really familiar to them. Yeah, big time. Yeah, big time. Um, the training, though, is completely different. So getting used to cutting angles, getting inside, throwing proper punches, because you can't rely on missing, slipping wrong into a takedown, right? Into a body lock. You can't do that with this, right? So uh, it's been interesting trying to adjust and bring back that, that uh, old school street fighter that I started out as initially. You know, you go back and watch my first few, few fights. That's what I got in there. I just attack, you know, just bop, 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 bop. And uh, so getting that back has been, uh, it's been an adjustment. What does it mean? And I know you've already kind of touched on it, but to get to fight here, to do this one in Albuquerque, I know since you returned, that's one of the things that you've kept talking mm -hmm. to me about. Hopefully I can get on this card. Hopefully I can get on that card and it hasn't happened. What does it mean to you to be here? It means, uh, it means everything. Um, I lost my mom a couple of years ago. So being able to fight here at home in front of my people, right? Um, it means a lot. So and it's put me in a different mentality. My, my whole mentality is different. Um, I took a couple of fights last year. I rushed into them. I probably shouldn't have. I was angry about a, uh, a, the Arizona fight, you know, and how I got cheap twice. And that's my fault. I kept fighting. You know, I could have taken the easy way out, but I kept fighting. Um, I wasn't wholly connected into those last two fights. Uh, my heart and my mind weren't connected for those fights. And being here in front of my people, I'm connected more than I've ever been. And that's a scary thing um, because I'm just, just ready. You know, last time I fought here was in, uh, in 2009, and it was against Drew Fickett. My back was against the wall more than it was ever in my life. And I was watching the tape, and I was just so casual and collective and calm because that was the one fight where I was not nervous. I was not scared because I could hear the chants out there before I walked out, right? Sandoval, Albuquerque, Burke, everything. And it just filled me, and it took that fear right out of me. Because anybody that says they're not afraid, they don't have nervousness, they're not scared, they're fucking lying. You're back. It's two old school fighters. It's the prospect series. Don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. Is this one and done or is this something you could see going forward with because there's an opportunity to earn a contract? I'm not looking that far right now, honestly. I'm not looking that far. Like I said, this is, uh, this is personal for me. It doesn't mean anything else after the 27th right now. Right now, my focus is January 27th. That's it. That's it. Uh, we'll see what happens. You know, uh, I like the training a lot more, for sure. It's a lot easier on the body. Um, but uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Thank you for the time. I appreciate it, man. Uh, give a couple shout outs. Obviously, I always thank you to Cage Minds for always showing support for the local people, always putting us on the map. Without this guy, man, we wouldn't be uh, known and be out there. I um, also got a couple sponsors I want to thank out. Always Il Chino Meals. They take care of my, my nutrition, my diet, Legion Iron, where I get my work at. We've got our fight team. Um, Aurora Beauty Parlor, always taking care of my recovery. That's important, people. I cannot stress it enough. I was just telling this man he needs to go get cupped. It is a beautiful thing. Uh, Pure Muscle Nutrition. Get the supplements that you need when you're in Albuquerque. Mid-State Structural and Welding, Gabe's Barber Fades, Al's Upholstery, and Ed Boswell, Home and Authority Real Estate. We got the full team here for everything you need. Health, nutrition, staying in shape, getting your body right, looking clean, get your car done, everything, man. Get you a home. Um, but uh, big shout out to all my sponsors again for taking care of me and believing in me. And uh, 
we got the win coming on the 27th. Mark my words. <laughs>